Hi, everybody. I just got back from the Bitcoin 2021 Miami conference, and I felt like I needed to write something and show you guys something about the origins of the Bitcoin in-person community, how people met in person in San Francisco in 2013 when Bitcoin was $10. I'm going to walk you through what that vibe was like. I'm going to walk you through how those conversations went. And then I'm going to talk about my experience at Bitcoin 2021. Before we begin, I want to give a shout out to Ledin. Ledin is a great place to go lend your Bitcoin and earn a yield. It's a little bit riskier than just hodling yourself. Uh, when you hodl, you own your keys and your coins. Uh, you are taking risk when you do this, but you can earn a yield doing that. So if the risk you feel is appropriate, this is a great way to earn yield. All right. So to my article, the origins of the Bitcoin community. Now, I think some of y'all have probably heard my story before, but my story started with me moving to San Francisco in 2013. So I bought my first Bitcoin in 2012 when I was living in Dallas, Texas. And when I was living there, and by the way, I'm about to move back to Austin. That's why I've got boxes in the background. This is my last recording in San Francisco. But I'm moving to Austin, Texas in a couple of days. But I came from Dallas, bought my first Bitcoin around $10 when I was in Dallas. And I was working in a small investment firm. They decided to uh, purchase a portfolio of different assets on in nor Northern California. And they were I was the youngest guy, <laughs> single guy in the company. It was a small firm. And they were like, how about we send you out to the West Coast and open up our West Coast portfolio? So that's how I got to San Francisco in January 2013. I mean, I was super stoked. Like no one in Dallas talked about Bitcoin. Dallas is not a big tech hub. This is back in 2013, remember, a long, long time ago. And so I was super excited to come out here. And the first thing I did was sign up for the Bitcoin meetup. Now, I was working crazy hours at the time. But in January, uh, when I moved out there, there was a meetup. And what was kind of crazy is when I showed up, there was only about a dozen people that were there. I mean, it was tiny. And this is in San Francisco, the tech hub of the world, right? And I found an old, I actually pulled up the meetup app and found the old um, <laughs> the old event. <laughs> so 31 hours repeat, but only 12 showed up. So that was uh, when Bitcoin was around $10. Um, and it was at this place called 20 Mission. So 20 Mission was kind of the hub of Bitcoin back in that day. I'm gonna play a little clip from that. So Vice did a documentary on it. That's Jared kind of on the right with the suit code. Him and I are still uh, uh, really good buddies. <laughs> Inside, it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's kind of like a hacker house. Jared put an RFID chip in his hand so he could open up doors. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like this weird hacker house where they had like 3D printers and it was kind of like a rave party sort of scene. Pretty wild time back then. Um, and <laughs> and since 20, uh, and since he created the first Bitcoin exchange called Trade Hill. And so this is a picture from one of those first meetups. And as you can see, the room is pretty sparse and there's a couple of cheap beers. And that was the Bitcoin scene in San Francisco in 2013. Now, when May 2013 hit, the price went from $10 to 260. That was the first bubble in 2013, which we might see the same type of bubble happen this year as well, where we had two bubbles. 2013 had two bubbles in the beginning, one in the beginning, one at the end. Um, so this was the first one that had journalists and VCs coming to it. And this was called the hundred dollar party. <laughs> um, you know, there's a lot of people, it was jam packed. And that's, that's the moment when I decided to start to build products in the crypto space. I mean, at the time I was still working full time at the small investment firm. I didn't uh, have a ton of time to go build this, but with that, just like want and need to go participate in the Bitcoin ecosystem. That's how I got into tech. Um, and, oh, there's a really cool... This is a, a video of the space when they were first creating it. Um, so they created like a little action scene, a little short five minute movie where it's a kind of a fight scene. But this was kind of the party vibe. <laughs> the next morning is it's this co-working space, you know, it's co-living space with like 50 people with one kitchen and a couple of group bathrooms. So kind of a crazy place. And I want to take a quick break to showcase a product that I love. CryptoTag. CryptoTag is the best way to store your Bitcoin backup. It's made on titanium, this thick titanium plate. You etch in your backup on here. It's an incredible way to store it. It's fireproof, waterproof, crush proof. It's even volcano proof. I shit you not. I actually looked up what the melting point is for titanium and how hot lava gets. This could actually survive being in lava. Um, I wouldn't recommend trying it, but based on the specifications, it can do that. If you like this, check out the link below. Mycelium wallet's still around, the uh, kind of a classic Bitcoin wallet, BitPay. People know them. Butterfly Labs, they were a Bitcoin uh, mining manufacturer. They had a huge shipping delays, which caused a lot of people to lose money. All sorts of stuff. Coinsetter was an old exchange uh, done by Jared Lucas Sedwich. He had Ripple there. Uh, there's Trade Hill. And then the heroes and villains at that time. I'm, I'm not sure if anyone actually recognizes 
who there's Jared and there's uh, <laughs> there's Charlie Lee. So people might recognize them, but um, yeah, here's the and there's the villains. Most people don't recognize these names like Zhao Tong and Pirate Forty and Bruce Wagner. But that was the scene back then. It was super tiny. You know, the Winklevi were the the stars. So this is I went way back machine and pulled the uh, speaker details. <laughs> I mean, look how young Andreas Antonopoulos looks. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a kind of a crazy experience back in that day. Um, so that that was how big the space was. A lot of people have seen that video of Andreas Antonopoulos speaking to the empty crowd. That's from this conference where Andreas, um, you know, later that year really grew in prominence. But back in that day, you know, there really wasn't like a ton of interest. Roger Ver, which I'm not a huge fan of Roger, but his original tweet about it only got three likes. <laughs> that, that I think that kind of puts it into context. Um, and, you know, there had only been one or two Bitcoin conferences before the May 2013 San Jose Bitcoin conference. And over the years, I've been over to like 50 different crypto conferences. It's been been kind of a, a wild time over the last eight years. But Bitcoin 2021 was something special, something bigger. There was 12,000 Bitcoiners there. I mean, that's incredible. Their last conference that they threw, Bitcoin 2019, had 2,000. And I thought that was huge. And that was in San Francisco. This one was even bigger. I mean, this was wild to see. Um and at the conference, there's investment bankers standing alongside plebs, crypto billionaires, pro athletes, football players, basketball players. For me, I love that in-person dynamic. It's thrilling to see Bitcoiners, especially after COVID and after a crypto winter. And that excitement was palatable. People were excited that they're building and being a part of this revolution. 12,000 people just for this one event. Um, I think that, you know, for a lot of them too, and a couple of people, a couple of people mentioned this to me that this was their first time at a conference meeting other Bitcoiners in person. And this is what brings me to my last thought. It's critical that you go try to meet up with other Bitcoiners in person. There's got to be an event going on in your local city, no matter where it is. This gives you a connection with the community. Um, I think it's a very lonely experience if you hodl and you don't get to connect with anyone else. So, you know, after this long journey, uh, meet up with another Bitcoiner in this space, grab a beer with them, go grab dinner or lunch with them if you don't drink. But Bitcoin is is a community. Bitcoin is about a revolution. And to feel part of that, you need to meet up with other Bitcoiners. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, journey back into time, uh, going over through all these different uh, <laughs> different elements of these uh, Bitcoin meetups to Bitcoin conferences. Um, if you like what you saw, give me a subscribe, throw me a like. That's going to help me out a lot. Get, help me get this content to more people. All right. Thank you. See you in Austin. Cheers.